Our next uh, discussion, uh, hosted by Ashley Rodriguez, is going to be about how to get more profitability out of these businesses. So, Ashley? Thanks, Rob. Um, joining me on stage is Martin Collins from Soft Tibet. Uh, Soft Tibet, if you're not familiar, is a major platform provider for the casino and the sports betting industries um, globally. And they're just getting started here in the US. So excited to um, dig into that with Martin. Um, so, Martin, here in the US, Online gambling is regulation has slowed, I think, more than some people had hoped. We're only in about six U.S. states right now. The market's really crowded. There's a lot of um, a lot of companies spending, um, some bowing out, right, because this marketplace is really competitive. You're jumping into North America now. Why? So first of all, thanks for having me, and thanks for coming to listen, guys. Hopefully, I can give some some value um, and help you understand how. We believe we can shift the dial within the U.S. market. So, so you're absolutely right. I mean, just this morning we heard the news from 888 um, that they're pulling out of the, the U.S. ultimately with their strategic review. So there's, there's no doubt that it's a tough market. There's no question. However, um, if we look at the key issues that exist in the market at the moment, I think you can broadly say there's probably two. Okay, one, the velocity of casino. In terms of regulation, I can see no end to, there's only six, as you rightly pointed out, whereas there's 38 with sports. Um, and then secondly, the, the engagement aspect. So the majority of states are dominated by two or maybe three brands. And if you look at the spend within their quarterly reports, you can see that they're spending a lot. The CPAs are high and bonusing costs and promotional costs are really high. And we believe that that actually presents an opportunity rather than a restriction for the simple reason that if you can engage with the customer and you look at the customer a little bit differently from how we have traditionally as an industry, then there's an actual opportunity there in order to take some market share ultimately. Well, so how do you do that without, uh, you know, these, bi these big companies, right, uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, these companies at the, the top of the marketplace right now, they've proven they've been willing to spend to, to maintain their lead. How, how does somebody come into this market and compete without um, overspending, without trying to outspend them? Okay, well, it's, it's not just about competing, it's about being solution driven as well. So, yes, we will run with our own BTC, B2C brand. And we're going to launch that into um, New Jersey, hopefully in about 12 months' time. We're just going through the process at the moment. But what that does by having B2C... Now, normally, if we have any operators here and they were uh, speaking to somebody like me on the platform side, they would say, there's no way that I'm going to compete with my platform provider okay, or with a solution provider. That absolutely, that, that would tend to be the, the message that would be given, Ashley. But... We actually believe that by being BTC, it gives us a massive advantage. So let, let me give you an example. If I, was, if I was to ask any of the operators here who utilize a third-party platform, what would your biggest concerns be? What, would, what, what issues would you be experiencing? Number one, okay, that your platform doesn't look at things from a BTC perspective. Two, that they're a bottleneck. So when you want to do something, um, and you want to develop and take your brand uh, in a particular direction or develop a particular solution, okay, they, they have a roadmap and it, it can't always be fitted in. So therefore, your eagerness to get something done is totally dependent upon a third party. So all of these aspects um, are, are issues with it simply being B2B. Now, what I'm saying is, is that by having a proof of concept, by localizing, by understanding the landscape within the market, we can actually help our partners uh, get to success much faster. So we, we believe by having that proof of concept, by having the, the understanding of the market, that ultimately we can help you achieve your goals as an operator. Well, tell us more about this, this proof of concept. Um, what, what is it that you're going to be bringing out in New Jersey? What is this going to look like? 
Okay, so the brand itself, I mean, ultimately it's a, it's a sports betting and, um, and casino offering. We, we're primarily a casino business at Softabit, um, but obviously when we talk about CPAs, a sports, a sports player is a little bit less expensive than a casino player, so it makes sense to have sports as well. But maybe in order to elaborate this, the, the true defining factor of what we believe could make the difference. So ultimately... Um, what, what we believe can be a true game changer within this market is proper gamification. Now, when I say proper gamification, what I'm referring to is, is not your traditional tournaments and rewards um, and journeys that, that we've seen across the market for the last five to ten years. What, what, what I'm talking about when we talk about gamification is actually the casual gaming component. So we all know... Um, that within the industry, the, the UI UX of the majority of offerings is fairly weak in comparison to other verticals. So what we did is we looked at what we believed was the best customer experience and we realised that that was coming from casual games. And then we started looking at it and developing solutions, um, which I can share with you a little bit. Uh, Casual games, and you mean sort of the mobile games that people play on their phones? Exa that... Exactly, right? So if, uh, you might have seen some of the games, uh, Civilization games, you know, the, the war games that you can play, where ultimately the user experience is incredibly engaging. Um, so we saw this engagement, this increase in engagement with... Um, with the, these solutions, and ultimately we sought to create a solution that would work with the casino, with the sports book, um, in order to take that customer and drive a more personalised experience for them. So ultimately, you can configure it as you wish, but ultimately you can define it by number of spins, you can define it by the number of deposits, by the number of bets, and essentially, once you've achieved that, you can get taken into the gamification, um, the gamification feature. Now, different brands call for different types of gamification, okay, because, because ultimately each audience is looking for engagement in a different way. They're different people. They look for different things. Um, but what we see is, is a massive increase in, in engagement. Um, for example, in terms of screen time, we see a 300% increase in the session time from each of the individuals that engage with the actual gamification component. So you go from maybe 20 minutes up to over an hour in terms of the actual, the actual engagement with the brand itself. Moreover, we, we don't think, given this experience, given the, this data that we've managed to manifest through our, our own B2C brands, we don't believe that we're now competing with other sports books, other casinos. Of course, we are to a degree. But actually, what, what we're competing for is screen time with TikTok, with Netflix, with Snapchat. So when somebody's looking for recreational time on their phone, we, that's what we're trying to engage with here, rather than somebody who's maybe a more hardened gambler and simply comes onto the site, plays, and goes away. It's like the, I call it mobile native so I, I certainly can't call myself a mobile native. I'm too old. There was no such thing as a mobile when I was a kid. Um, or there was, but you only got them in London. Um, but, um, but kids have been brought up with a mobile on their hand like, since they were born, pretty much. And they, they ex have a different expectation of their experience to what we do or to what my generation does. So we're trying to cater for that and to give them an experience that keeps them coming back again, again, and again. And I want to come back to that point on, on TikTok and, and competing for screen time. But, but first, just to clarify, so these, um, these stats that you shared, um, this, the, the results that you've been seeing from your B2C brands, this is based on the experience that's, that's available now in Europe, right? This is something that you've already rolled out in Europe. You're going to be bringing it to, to New Jersey. Absolutely, yep. Got it. Um, so, so coming back to, to this idea of, of TikTok and Instagram and sort of competing for screen time, um, those those apps, I think, often go for a, a younger market than maybe we typically think of for, for online gambling, right? I think the latest um, stats show that uh, TikTok users are more likely to be 18 to 34-year-olds than, than their older counterparts. So break that down for us. How does Who is the target audience for these products, for these games, and how does that compare to the most valuable customers for online gambling? Okay, so... I, again, the, 
the, the traditional customer that we were aiming this towards was your 18 to 35 year old, the, the mobile native individuals. But what we found is, is that, that depending on the type of gamification that we um, are utilizing, it, it appeals to a, a, a broad range of, um, of, of, of your audience as an operator. So for example, as an average across the various brands that, that where we use gamification, we see 52% of the monthly actives engaging with the gamification. So that's more than half of your, of your customer base is actually utilizing these solutions and spending longer on your site engaging with your brand. So although we traditionally, as a, as a, not just as an industry, an industry but as a, an, online, an online economy, we always think about the cohort and we, th and we think that, okay, it's, it's 18 to 35 year olds. But what we've seen essentially is that it depends upon the actual gamification that you're utilizing. Okay, so for example, we can offer something off the shelf, which would be an existing solution, and you could add your own brand to it, but we also offer bespoke solutions as well. And that ultimately allows you to create your own gamification directly in line with your own audience. So the majority of marketeers will, will understand what their audience looks like, and we can create a solution specific to them. Again, to personalize the solution, get more data points, and then and deliver a better experience. And what have you been learning about the, the customer here in the U.S.? How, how will you be tailoring these products, these games, for the U.S. market and the U.S. consumer? So it, it takes a little bit of investigation in order to understand the customer first. Okay, so if you're a traditional sports brand, then we have a, a solution um, called Stadium Builder, for example. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to actually engage with your sports bets, but once you achieve certain goals, you can actually start to utilize the coins that you're awarded in order to build stadiums. So like, for example, you could have all of the major football stadiums in a particular division, okay? And, and you can work towards having all of them. We also have collectibles. Um, so you guys all know about baseball cards, and, and, and in the UK we have Panini, which is like stickers that you put into an album. So we've utilized collectibles with a lot of our brands in order to create that sense of achievement and need. So for, for example, we had, uh, we had um, some cards that were um, old timers, you know, famous guys from back in the, the 70s and the 80s, and we made them really hard to achieve and everybody was working in order to, um, to actually get these cards and say that I have this and you don't, essentially. So there's a, a one-upmanship element to it as well with your friends. Um, so yeah. That, well, it, well it, that's a good point because one, you, you know, going back to the, the sort of TikTok analogy, um, the, the social element, right, is what, what makes these apps so engaging. So, so tell us a little bit more about the social component and how that works. And this is, this is important as well because it is a different type of customer base. Um, it, it is a different audience. It's more recreational. If you, if you think about um, the European experience, and if I, again, if I asked everybody here, name one European brand, uh, I'm sure 60, 70% of you would say Bet365. Bet um, but they aren't taking on the shrewd punter. They're taking on the recreational gambler who spends 10 euros a week, 20 euros a week max. And that, that's a different audience, and that's what, that's what we're trying to engage with here. So it's, it's a more sustainable model as well for your customer base. And ultimately, by engaging them with these solutions, you can massively reduce your promotional and your bonus cost, because you don't need to engage with them in, in that capacity. It's no longer a race to the bottom. It's, it's something that actually drives your brand equity and will keep, keep people coming back again, again, and again. And Martin, something that, that you and I have talked about is that here in, in the U.S. market, really the, the operator focus has so far really been on acquisition, acquisition, acquisition. How are you starting to see um, that conversation changed? Um, how do you, wh where does engagement, what we've been talking about here, where does that sort of fit into the priority set for operators right now? So that, that's a really interesting question. Now, I don't know if anybody here uh, read the Draft Kings report um, from 2023, but for the first time, Jason Robbins quoted 
Acquisition is an important factor, of course, right? But he also mentioned engagement and loyalty, and that's the first time that's ever been mentioned. So they're making acquisitions like Jackpocket, and that's a different audience again. Okay, going back to the original point when we're talking about different audiences and how you engage with them. But essentially, if you can't keep your customers, then again, it's a, it's a race to the bottom, actually. If you need to be able to maximize your ROI. The US market, in comparison to any other market, is, has high barriers to entry, especially from a commercial perspective. So you have the license, you have the market access, you have all the third parties. You don't tend to get geolocation in other um, jurisdictions either. So there's a massive cost that is associated with entry into this market. And if you're not maximizing the opportunity with your customers, once you get them engaged and signed into your site, then it, essentially you're burning money. And this is what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make sure that um, people are, are getting the most from their buck. So it's essentially trying to build experiences. Or, or I should ask, are all these are all these free to play? These games? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so essentially the idea is to sort of recreate the experience that you would find in mobile, free free mobile games, and then try to use that to keep people within the ecosystem and keep people coming back. And hopefully that leads to them spending more money and, and gambling more. Absolutely. And this is, this is the thing. You're not tied down to one particular experience, one tick, particular type of gamification. You can see some of the examples of some of the projects that we're working on at the moment. So you can see the, the, the war game where you're actually collecting characters in order to fight against your friends. Um, you saw the, the coin master. Um, which I'm sure everybody's aware of. So you can actually steal coins from your friends. Um, and then the Monopoly game at the end. I mean, this is, this is different types of gamification, again, for different audiences. So it, it is ultimately to bring them back again and again. And, and they need to be, feel as if they're being listened to, your customers. That's what we've realized. And I, I was just speaking to somebody before in, 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 backstage, and they asked me, they said, is this just a... Is it just a fad? Is it just something that's like, being brought to the market and, and ultimately you're going to sell it? But I, I was quite sceptical. Okay, but when you see the numbers and how it engages with the, the, the end user, it's incredible. It's, it's an unbelievable game changer. Unbelievable. And Martin, uh, we've got just a minute left, so mm -hmm. I want to end on more of a big picture note. I'd love to know, um, you know, you, you know the international marketplace. You're, you're learning more about the U.S. market every day. Uh, give us one of your predictions for the coming year. Ah, okay. So um, I've been saying this for about two years, so I'm not sure if, it, if it's a prediction anymore, but okay. I'm going to go with it anyway. But, but, but I genuinely, and the, after this morning's news, people might find this quite funny, but I genuinely believe there's going to be a second wave within the States. I think it's, it will be closely tied to the acceleration of iCasino, and the, the velocity that that moves with. But essentially, I, I see organizations hovering, um, waiting in order to, to strike at the right moment and come into this market and take away the, the duopoly, if you like, um, and actually start having a, a more competitive landscape and marketplace. Do you think we'll see that, that, um, that wave start to, to come 2024? Mm. I think I think we'll start talking about it more. I think it will be more obvious. I think as a, as an industry, we need to lobby better within the states, and rather rather than doing it in isolation, work together um, in order to get achieve the goals that, that we want to achieve, particularly around the acceleration of i, I casino. Um, but yeah, I think that 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 will become more obvious. Um, as the discussion opens up and becomes more prevalent, with everybody being involved, rather than just the the, the primary actors in the market at the moment. Well, thank you so much, Martin. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you.